Good morning, motivators. It might not seem like much, but in behind these doors is a bike garage, a bike shed, a bike storage locker that is as secure as I could possibly make it and as convenient as I could possibly make it. This is our new home on Vancouver Island. and We're trying to set it up so that we can have people come in from all around the world. And one of the things that people are bringing, bikes. So we gotta make sure we have a place to store them. So let's say you have an area under a deck like we do, or maybe in between a couple of buildings on your property. Maybe there's just some sort of area that you think you could possibly enclose that doesn't have to necessarily look like this, but you wanna get a little bit of extra space out of it. Now the concern is always, well, how do I make something like this actually secure enough to be able to be outside and not have my bikes inside taking up space? And how do I make it dry enough so that my bikes can actually withstand the elements being outside? So even if you don't have a setup exactly like this, I'm gonna tell you some of the methods that I use and selected in the building of this that you could maybe apply to something that you choose to build. Let's dive in. The first thing I had to do was prep the area. I had to do a little bit of cleanup and what we had outside here was really wispy, thin, almost like lattice type siding that I had to take off of all the side because that isn't going to be secure enough. But my understanding actually living in Winnipeg where there's a lot of property crime is that most thefts are spur of the moment. It's we know that there's something to take or we think there's something to take here. They get in, take it, move away. So in the case of all that lattice, that's gonna be something that people can really quickly go pull it all off because it was just stapled, it's just thin stuff. But I wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to be the case. So what I ended up doing was I took down all of that lattice and I replaced it with two by six pressure treated wood here. The pressure treated is to allow it to be out here in the elements without getting soft, without degrading. The two by six is because this is like, this is really, really solid stuff. How I ended up putting this together was with screws. Now you want screws because people can't come with a crowbar and pry this off with screws. After I built it, I came back and I took out some of the screws randomly and I replaced them with security screws. Now security screws, they don't have a Phillips head, a Robertson head, a slot head, all of the common things that robbers or anyone really might be walking around with easily. What security screws are is it's a specific head that unless you have that head, you aren't taking that screw out. So I replaced about half of the screws here once I had it all set up with those security screws. The security isn't done yet. Come into the inside. My dad made the really good comment when I showed him putting up all of the two by fours that people could theoretically just pry one of these two by fours off eh, somewhat easily. So he recommended actually taking some of those leftover small little slats. This is just one inch little members here and screwing those in vertically. Now what happens is somebody can go ahead and take off this top board if they really, really want to and somehow they have that security screw. But then even if they unscrew everything there, this board is going to stay put because it's screwed into all these members vertically. Now I put those all the way around at roughly eight and a half inch intervals. Really, it just kind of looks like lattice from the outside and from the inside, it actually serves that really nice security purpose. Let's talk the final little bit of security. This is like top, top, top end. <sighs> so for the first couple of weeks, as I was putting this together, I just had a small little normal latch on this. The problem with typical latches is that somebody can come in with a pair of bolt cutters and poof, really quickly take that off. A typical latch is eh, fairly namby-pamby. If somebody really wanted to, again, they could take a crowbar, they could take a hammer, bam, break the latch fairly easily. Not with this. So what I ended up putting in here is called a hasp and lock combo. This is actually intended for cargo trailers and vans and things that are left out in yards or in back alleys and they often have a lot of tools and goods in there that people want to steal. 
So this thing is like hardcore quarter inch steel. And then I reinforced with a two by four in behind these bridging a couple of these pieces here so that it's not just in one area and they can just take one of the boards off. These are also security screwed in. But what this has is this lock is integral to it. So there's nothing exposed. There is nothing that somebody could come in with a pair of bolt cutters and actually cut. You can hammer on this for days on end because it's bolted in, it's quarter inch steel. The bolts are three and a half inches going all the way through a one inch piece of board here and then an inch and a half piece of board there. This thing is going to be more secure than in the garage. But what it's got to secure is a bunch of bikes. I've got storage in there for the bikes that is really, really super unique. I've actually been looking at how to get as many bikes as possible into a storage area as I possibly could for like six months. And this is what we've got. One of the issues that I had with our old bike storage system at the old pain cave is that every single bike took up roughly two feet. So you add that up and when you're out here in Vancouver Island, we want a road bike, we want a gravel bike, we want a triathlon bike, we want a mountain bike, we want commuter bikes, times some of those bikes by two because NTK is going to ride a little bit out here. We're talking maybe seven, eight, nine bikes. So do I really want to dedicate 18 feet for bike storage? No, I want to be able to store that in this nice little area. Well, how I did that was with sliding hooks. Am I right? Look at this, huh? I actually took this idea from a mountain bike YouTuber who I'll link his video at the end of this video to give him some credit. And he has a couple of options where things move and slide a little bit smoother, but but personally, I just wasn't feeling the need to have some of those features and it also made it significantly cheaper. But he's got a really good tutorial on putting all of this together if you want to see this in more detail. What I put here was closet rod at the top. Cost maybe, I think, 30 bucks. And then we took typical bike hooks that are about five inches long. I ended up actually screwing a bolt and a washer in so the washer keeps it from pulling through because it's wider than the track. And then the bolt, you're gonna say, well, aren't these bike hooks supposed to be screwed into wood? Yeah, that's true. But if you actually get the right size bolt, you can still just thread them on. You're gonna rip the thread apart, but it doesn't really matter because you don't really need the thread. It's all being hung just by gravity. So I screwed this up into the joist and then just started sliding these hooks in. And if you take a look at this little area here, we have three bikes in about two and a half square feet. So I'm cutting down the amount of storage space that we need to store bikes by about two thirds. Next question is, well, how do you actually keep this dry? Doesn't it rain a lot? The answer, is right up here. This is just plastic corrugated sheeting that you would actually see uh, over top of like a greenhouse or a pergola. These are about 50 bucks a sheet. They come in about 24 inches wide, 10 feet long. So just three of them across was all we needed to do. I had to notch it around the posts that we've got here and then overlap and two-sided rubber tape all of the seams and then a little bit of overlap of a full groove so that there is no water in here. Any water that's currently on the ground right now is just from what's splashed with everything else around it actually dripping. There is no dripping at all in here and we just had the hardest rainstorm that most people have seen here in a long, long time. Bikes are bone dry. Little admission of a tip, don't try to use old fence boards and overlap them thinking it's gonna be good. I spent an entire afternoon doing that up here and then it just leaked right away. So then you saw a grumpy tear and having to undo all of that work and then put the proper stuff up. Put the proper stuff up right from the start, okay? Then there are some finishing touches that we have to put on because this is a in and out working, functioning every single day kind of bike shed. How can we get as much of the gross stuff, the dirty stuff out of the house and into this area? So I just took some really basic coat hanger hooks, put them on the wall here 
for helmets. We have two on each side going down with three rows and we have room over top because I left a little bit of room over top of here for the Evoc tailgate pad here that can go and get muddy, dirty. I can spray it down in a special area that I'm about to show you over there. And then I can just drip dry over in this spot right here. I also wanted an area to be able to wash bikes. That's why on this side, on the exterior, I ended up putting up this little bike hook here. It's just screwed into the edge. It's not with the security screws. Um, if somebody wants to steal this $8 hook, they're more than welcome. But something to note is that as I'm spraying here, there's a lot of water coming down. So I specifically ended up choosing an area with river wash. Now, if you have an area that you want to put a bike washing station, I would definitely encourage you not to have mud or grass underneath because the amount of water that's going to come down is going to create a little bit of erosion. It's always going to be mucky. So you want something like concrete or river wash underneath. When I ended up posting a little teaser about this on Instagram, some people did have the comment about this being out in salt air. Now there's a couple of things about that. People also posted about the humid air that would have been in the old pain cave where the bikes were stored and we had a master spa's swim spot. It was fairly humid in there, even with a dehumidifier. But at no point did I ever look at any of the components on my bikes that had been in there with that swim spa for two years and see any sort of corrosion. My thoughts, and I could be proven wrong, and if I am proven wrong, I'm just gonna buy an Amazon bike cover and put it over and see if that works, is that the air is humid everywhere. I'm opening the garage door, I'm closing the garage door. Even if I were to build bike storage in the garage, it's still humid salt water air there, just like it is here. It's the same air inside and outside. So I am hoping that this will be enough. I'm gonna keep an eye on all of the bike parts and see how they're holding up. And really when it comes down to it, the bike parts that can corrode are like chains and cassettes and cog sets, like things that really get replaced anyway. That said, I am bringing all the electronics inside, my Garmin 1080 plus bike computer, the SRAM batteries and my Garmin radar light. Like all of those are going to come inside. It's really just gonna be the mechanical stuff that's in here. So motivators, I hope that you found that informative. I certainly found this fun. We have a lot of projects that we are creating in the pain cave inside in Island Relaxo out here with swim spa, hot tub, sauna. I'll have affiliate links in the description below to any of the specific things that I chose and would recommend for you if you were doing something similar like this that might be hard to find if you're wondering which things I actually use. Those will all be linked in the description below. And if you found this helpful, I would love if you showed us your appreciation by hitting the like button below. It is a total pain in the patoot to move a camera around while you're doing construction. So with all of that said, later motivators.